Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.D. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In this 11th video tutorial of what was our 10-part video tutorial series on Drupal 7 module development, I want to wrap things up and show you how we can disable the link after an administrator has chosen on their administration form that they don't want users to be able to continue to submit flags. That said, before we do that, I'm over at Toronto Website Developer.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series. I have a number up available already. This one should be up momentarily. Uh, assuming I have some time to kind of wrap things up and uh, do what I need to do. Uh, additionally, when you purchase video tutorials, you continue to support me to bring these video tutorials free and frequently available on YouTube. And if you purchase more than one, you'll definitely get a, a discount that's applied automatically at your checkout. If you don't have the money to support uh, the video tutorials, but you would like to give back, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment on YouTube. Two small things you can do to help me out. It gives me a lot of feedback. Uh, helps make sure that I'm on track, but also YouTube uses it to track user engagement and promote these video tutorials. Lastly, if you haven't subscribed, as I mentioned in the last video tutorial, I can't wait to hit 4,000 users. So please subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, I do track that and it'll be a big milestone for me. Let's get started. I'm over at Toronto Website Developer uh, Sandbox, local host here, and you can see that I've got this disabled link. Um, I've gone ahead and I was playing with some things. Uh, but you can see I can still apply and remove my application when uh, applications haven't been approved. Uh, you remember we did our administration form um, and now what I've done is I've allowed users or rather administrators to disable links. So if I reload this page, I actually removed um, some code. Hopefully it will disappear here if I just flush my caches. And it still says disabled. Yeah, so that's okay. Don't worry about that. Uh, that's because I haven't saved my module. Now what we need to do is we're going to look at the flag API.php. When we look through here, you'll see that there's this hook, hook flag link. Um, at first glance, it seems like this is the best way to go. This is going to give us what we need to do. However, um, in reading about it and playing with this video tutorial and trying to get uh, things wrapped up, you need to actually define a link through hook flag link uh, and do a couple of uh, different things in order to actually just implement this hook flag link to alter uh, that what is actually a link on the page. So rather than kind of do that, jump through some hoops and hurdles, for the purpose of this video tutorial and rather uh, really our module, what we can do is implement template preprocess flag. And now we're going to take a quick detour just for a quick second without going down the rabbit hole. But essentially, uh, Drupal's got this, this module system and this template system, or rather this you know theming system. And so whenever you render anything out to the screen, what you should be doing is, is passing it through the theming system so that module developers, themers can all um, change that up. And so that's what's happening here with template preprocess flag. What it's doing is uh, through the theme system, you essentially have your template calls, module calls, and then um, theming calls. And so the template is like your first level and then module can come in and overwrite that stuff. That's what we're gonna do. And we do that by removing uh, template. And just like with hooks, uh, it, our module name will go in place of template. So if I go back over to flag application module here and I add in um, function flag application, um, what was it? Uh, pre process flag, pre process flag. I'm going to pass in vars and I'm going to show you in a second. Um, the reason why I'm doing vars is because anything that in the theme system always gets a variables. Um, um, variable, I guess, passed to it, a parameter. And so if you do a quick Google search for uh, template preprocess flag, you'll get over to Drupal Contrib, which is awesome. It's actually like api.drupal.org, but for contributed modules as well. And so you can see here the template preprocess flag. This is the actual code out of the flag module at line 1614. And you'll see it takes in variables and they're always passed in by reference because any changes we want to occur, we want them to be persistent. So you can see a bunch of stuff going on here. And then we're going to interject as well. So what I'm going to do is just DSM uh, the vars here, and we'll take a look at that. And if I go back to my page here, I'm going to re, oops, not here. I'm going to uh, flush my caches because any theme call is actually uh, cached. So I've got to go ahead and do that. And you'll see here down now I've lost, like this is actually, uh, you can remove it now. Um, before it was, it was grayed out because of the fact that I was testing things. Anyways, here's the vars. Um, a thing to note here, is we've got the entity ID, entity ID 11. Um, in VARS, we don't actually know if this flag is approved or not approved. Um, it, it's not something that's actually uh, grabbed when the when the flag object is, is, is rendered. So you'll see I've got the actual flag object. It's sort of built. Um, so I do have access to kind of 
the flag application approved action and the message, um, but I don't actually have uh, access to whether or not this flag is uh, approved or denied. I just know that it has been flagged, right? So um, that said, what we need to do is go back to our code and uh, I'm gonna paste some stuff in here and I'm gonna walk you through specifically what I'm doing. So, copy this first. I'm going to paste this in here. So first thing I'm going to do is I essentially want to change the link. And so what I should have showed you is coming back here. If we look at this, we can see here's link text. Here's link title. Uh, and we can see an actual link href, right? So this is the reference that it's going to. And so I want to play with this stuff. I want to uh, change that up. And so I don't want the reference to go anywhere. So I'm going to make that blank. And I want the text to actually be the message from uh, the flag application settings. And so if you remember, we, we had the flag uh, object there and we, had, we saw the message, so we were, we're pulling that in. But then I need to do a number of checks. And so that's why I have this if statement up there. So first and foremost, I wanna to check to make sure that this is actually a flag application. I do that by checking the flag name. And so is it an application? Yes. Also, is the action one? So if it is, uh, the link should be disabled, let's go on and check the third. The third is actually a call to a function I'm going to write, which is called flag application, application approved. It's gonna return true or false. So what I need to do is paste in that function to show you. And the reason why we have that is because we wanna know, has there been a, an application that's been approved? If yes, okay, disable the link for, um, for this event. If it hasn't been approved, well then people should still be able to apply so uh, we want to know if that's true or false. Paste in some code here and copy this. And so really, I mean, this, this if we were doing this properly. It should have an at param here. It should be uh, entity ID, you know, ID of the entity we are checking. And then like at return true, or sorry, uh, Boolean whether uh, the application has been approved, right? Um, and we'll just put this, this code up here. You see our asterisks are all off. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're taking the entity ID, so that's good. Now, what we're doing is we're building a query. So we want to check the status from flag application table. Uh, so that's why we're saying from FA and uh, we're providing a table alias. But we've got to left join the flagging table, F, where the flagging IDs equal each other, right? Or sorry, on where the flagging IDs uh, equal each other. And then the two conditions are, it's gotta be equal to the entity ID that we're passing in and the status has to be equal to one. And so that's in the conditions that we've developed down here as an array. And so what we're doing here is we're checking, are we getting a field back? We should only really get one field back if uh, the user's got it on, so locked down. And so if we do get any field back, we're gonna return true. If we don't get a field back, we're going to return false. And so that will be a check here. This will, this and will be either true or false as a result of this. And so if it's true, go ahead and disable the link and then provide the, the message. Let's go ahead and save that. Go back to our page. Let's reload this. And so we'll see up here. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually take you to flag applications. And so you'll see we've got uh, the tests event. Uh, we've had some approved. And so if we look here at test event, I can't actually click on the link. And Peter's event link test, we haven't had any approved. We've had them both denied. So you can still go ahead and click uh, on your application uh, and update that and whatnot. And uh, same as the event uh, donation event. And so we can just test this to change Peter's event link test to approved. Go ahead and hit that. And then if we go and we reload our page, we'll see now it's disabled, right? So that's essentially it. That's the video tutorial series in a nutshell. Um, there was one thing I did want to flag for you. And, um, you know, if you're a little bit more astute, you probably notice that we are changing up this flag after the fact. So the database has already gone, done a bunch, or rather the flag module has already gone, done a bunch of stuff, built up this, uh, this link to come back, done all the hard work, and then we're just essentially stepping in and erasing it. So that's not the most efficient. Um, you know, if we had some time, we would probably wanna go back and interject ourselves earlier in the process so that we can avoid all of that. And we would do that using the API by defining this, this, this link type 
um, and then making sure that it's handled properly and we don't go through all of that. But for the purpose of this video tutorial and just wanting to override a link, giving you an idea of how theming works, uh, this is sufficient. Uh, but obviously, if you were getting into like kind of a more complex site, you know, with uh, thousands upon thousands of nodes uh, and every little bit helps, you probably wouldn't want to do this so late in the game. Anyways, if this video tutorial helped you, please let me know. Leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, uh, get back to me. Uh, hopefully the entire series was, uh, was informative and helped you out. And we'll see you for the next one, which should be on either theming, uh, develop your own custom theme, or uh, Drupal 7's commerce module. Thanks very much for watching.